I put a one terabyte SSD into this USB-C hub, connected it to power, an external microphone, and I recorded one hour and 32 minutes of 4K60 ProRes footage without dropping any frames on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. And it created a 998 gigabyte file. And then I just changed one thing in this setup and my iPhone 15 Pro Max overheated after just eight and a half minutes of recording ProRes footage. So I've been on a search for the ideal solution to record ProRes video directly to an external SSD using an external microphone and having power so I don't have to worry about the battery on my iPhone 15. At first, I found all the ways not to do it. I tried a USB flash drive and that's not fast enough to record ProRes directly. Then I got a proper SSD, this is the Samsung T7, and it worked. I actually recorded my entire Sonos Move 2 review using my iPhone 15 Pro Max recording directly to this SSD. But it was going through this anchor hub and well, it's just it's too many cables, it's too messy. And I noticed it started dropping frames at about 25 minutes of recording, which means this anchor hub probably isn't fast enough. And then I discovered, thanks to Apple Insider, that you can actually get a USB-C hub with inbuilt SSD storage or even install an M2 chip. So I first tried the Satechi USB-C hub. Supposedly you can install an M2 chip. It was a struggle to fit, something was wrong with the connector. And I didn't like that hub because it had two USB-A ports and only one USB-C in for power. I wanted to be able to connect my microphones via USB-C and not have to use an A to C adapter. Also that M2 SSD just wouldn't work in the Satechi hub, so I returned that one. I continued my search and then I found this one, a brand I have never heard of, but it's called Solore and S Global. This one is actually half the price of the Satechi. This one is $50. It has two USB-A ports, micro SD and regular SD card slots, an HDMI out, and two USB-C ports, one for power in and then another one where I can connect my external microphones ideal port setup for what I'm trying to do. And it gives you the ability to put an M2 SSD inside the hub and this can act like an external drive. There are other larger docks that would let you do this setup, but I wanted something pretty small and portable that I could Velcro to a cage or a tripod and use this with my iPhone. And this hub has 10 gigabit per second USB 3.1 speeds, which should be plenty fast for external SSD recording. I put in the M2 SSD, connected it to my iPhone, and it didn't recognize it right away. I did have to first connect it to my Mac, open disk utility, and then format this drive as APFS. Now you can format an SSD in XFAT, and then it will be readable by both Mac and Windows computers, but I'm all Mac all the time. So I formatted it as APFS. Now when I connected it back to my iPhone, the SSD showed up in the Files app and it was ready to record. I opened up the camera app and you could see the little USB-C symbol at the bottom, meaning that the camera app recognizes it and will record ProRes video directly to that SSD. Now I also wanted to be able to use external microphones and this second USB-C port does just that. I connected my Rode Wireless Go 2 receiver to this hub and Ferrite, one of my favorite apps, I use it to edit all my podcasts, link in the description, even through the hub, it recognized the microphone and it was recording from that external audio. Then I connected power and I was ready for my first test. I put my iPhone in 4K60 log format and I was gonna record for as long as the SSD would allow. I put a little astronomy loop on my computer screen so I could see if there were any dropped frames and it filled up the entire one terabyte SSD with a 998 gigabyte file and the best part is it didn't drop frames. It was able to record that 4K60 log footage for one hour and 31 minutes, this massive file, and then I could just bring it into Final Cut and edit it. And because the M2 SSD inside this hub can be swapped out, you can get larger ones if you want, if you want even more recording time. Yes, you would get more recording time if you did 4K30 or even 4K24, but I was just testing the maximum that you would do and you get an hour and 31 minutes. Now for my second test, I want to be able to preview what's on my iPhone screen on an external monitor because I want to use the best camera, the rear camera, and you can't see that and yourself at the same time. Now the setup did seem to work in my Sonos Move 2 review, but I'll get back to that in a second. So all I did for this second test was add the HDMI out display going into a capture card, a USB to HDMI capture card into my iPad Pro using the Orion app. Shout out to the Lux camera team. The Orion app is a free app. It's incredible. You can monitor pretty much anything, connect a switch, a video game system, whatever you want to your iPad using an inexpensive HDMI to USB-C dongle. I'll put a link to that app down in the description as well. I kept the 4K60 in log footage on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. There's no case on it either way. And I did leave some time for it to cool down between the first test and second test. It wasn't just a back-to-back -back test. So I started this one, but it only got to eight minutes and 25 seconds before the iPhone overheated. It threw up the warning sign, stopped the recording, and all I had was an eight minute file. So what's the only difference? It seems that if you try to do an HDMI out, the iPhone is now having to power a secondary display and recording that 4K60 log footage directly to an external SSD 
It's just too much and the processor overheats when you're trying to do all of that at once. Now, when I recorded my Sonos Move 2 review, I was doing 4K 30 HDR footage, not log. Supposedly that file size should be the same, but that 4K 30 made enough difference where I was able to record up to 25 minutes straight to an external SSD and the phone didn't overheat. Again, it was 4K 30, not doing log. It was just HDR ProRes video. So if you need more recording time and you're worried about your phone overheating, do 4K 30 or even 4K 24. And again, that is just if you're using HDMI out to an external monitor to see the iPhone screen. If you're not using the HDMI out and having your iPhone power a secondary display, it seems like it can go as long as the SSD has space. So this is only if you're trying to do an HDMI out and record ProRes video to an external SSD with an external microphone. Now, there have been lots of people online also recording directly to SD cards using SD card readers and, of course, lots of different SSDs. But I particularly wanted to be able to do it with a USB-C hub so I can connect an external microphone and have that HDMI out to monitor. And of the several different hub solutions I have tried, it seems that this Solore and S Global option is one of the best. You can install the M2 SSD directly inside, two USB-C ports, one I use for the external mic, the other for power, and it has that HDMI out if you want to try it. Now this also has the SD card slot, so if you wanted to put an SD card in here and record directly to that, ProRes footage will work for that too. And this hub in particular has that 10 gigabits per second USB 3.1 speeds, so that should be fine. Now overall, I find recording with the iPhone ProRes video is just great, especially if you're outside and want to do HDR footage. You're going to have two videos on the channel that are HDR, my Sonos Move 2 review and my Apple Watch Ultra 2 hike review. So I'll put those links down in the video description. Also, you could just check one of them up out here. And the footage looks great. But of course, I wanted to be able to do it all and record to an external SSD so I'm not filling up my phone storage. And like I said, if you're going to record an hour and a half of ProRes footage, that's a terabyte. And I didn't get the terabyte iPhone. I got the 512 gigabyte. And do I regret that? Yeah, a little bit. But this is going to be the setup that I use to record outside, probably some B-roll around the house, filming with the iPhone 15 Pro Max directly to an external SSD, having power and an external microphone. It's really just a cool experience. I'll put a link to this hub and the Samsung SSD down in the video description. You can check it out there. And if you have found another USB-C hub that has that built-in SSD and all these port options, and it's worked for you, and maybe you've done a test like I did, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. And if you have any questions about recording to an external SSD or USB-C hubs with the iPhone 15, drop a comment below. I'd love to answer you there. And before you go, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you want to get into shortcuts or you're trying to build shortcuts for your action button on your new iPhone 15 Pro, I have a video right here with seven easy shortcuts. I walk you through building each one of them. And if you want to see how I set up my iPhone with focus modes and only one home screen, check out this video right here. I think you'll like it.